Hey, welcome, Pastor Jeff, another Daily Word, capital W, which, by the way, will last eternally, even after this planet has uh, expired, so to speak. The Word of God is eternal. It is the path. It is your route. And it is what you do after you get rid of an old sin stronghold, pride, flesh, envy, uh, fear of other, what others will say, uh, love of money, gluttony, pornography, you name it. There, don't we all have a list? Uh, by the way, you can check out the seven things that the Lord calls an abomination in Proverbs 6. Let's go down that list, see how you do. <laughs> I'm always stuck on the very first one. You know what he hates the most? A proud look. Who had that first? Yeah, the fallen angel, Satan. So, um, yeah, get rid of pride. God hate, well, I don't like to use the word hate. He, um, but he uses it as an abomination. Let's use it. He hates pride because it, it is a complete renunciation of who you and I are and who he is. We are made in his image and we are submitted to him. It's, it couldn't be more simple. So the word of God, replace every sing strong, sin stronghold with his own word. The opposite of pride is submission to the holy God, the God almighty. I want to uh, share a powerful word in Matthew 10. I'm sorry, Matthew 11 today. This is powerful because this was a city. I've been blessed to have visited it myself in the Galilee. And he just, he hates what happened in Capernaum. Basically, he did all these miracles. They failed to change their behavior. They fail to repent. They fail to follow his way. Let's look at Matthew 11, starting in verse 20. And then it says, Then he began to rebuke the cities in which most of his mighty works had been done because they didn't repent. Isn't this true of where we are today in your city, in your nation? Verse 21, Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. That's heavy. These amazing works are done, miracles take place, and people turn their back on the living God on Jesus of Nazareth, the Christ of, of the living God. They did not turn to him. Repentance is the key, I would even say, before belief in who he is, there needs to be this turning and saying, I, I am a sinner. I need to change my behavior. I need to follow his way, which is indeed the kingdom. When Jesus came out of the wilderness after 40 days, defeating the enemy. His very first words as a preacher, and we find this in Matthew 4, verse 17, also in Mark 1, verse 17, his first words, repent. The kingdom is at hand. If you don't repent, you can't call yourself a Christian. Repentance needs to be the key to get into the kingdom. It's also the key to clean up from the old sin strongholds. They would not do that. In Bethesda, in Chorazin, and then in Capernaum. And he was very close to those in Capernaum. He says, verse 23, Matthew eleven twenty-three, 23, and you, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. Hello. Yeah, there's either hell or heaven. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. 
woe. But I say to you, verse 24, Jesus says to them, and to you and me, let's look at our, our own repentance needs, our own ways in which we have turned our backs on the way, the truth, and the life. He says, but I say to you that it should be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you. Yeah, there is a day of judgment coming. Each one of us will bend our knee and make an account of our lives in front of the living God. Today's the day to get ready for that. I've been through a forest fire that I never expected to survive. That was almost 40 years ago. None of us knows the day. The Lord knows the day where he will um, take you home and you will have to make an account in front of him. Do not be like those in those cities of Galilee, that special one of Capernaum of all places that was very close to him, very close to his heart, and yet they rejected him. You and I need to clean up as his bride. He's the soon coming bridegroom. Now, here's the good news. He will help you. No condemnation. We all fall short of the glory of God. He will forgive you when you confess your sins, which he knows already. And he will come in and dine with you, have communion with you, says in Revelation 3.20, if you will simply hear his knocking on the door of your mind and heart, and you open the door and welcome him in. I hope from this simple video and the others that are on this channel, National Day of Repentance, that you will share this with other people and you will actually set up your own small group we have materials to bless you in starting your own small repentance group. There's a group in the Philippines doing this. There is a group down in Texas doing this. God willing, we will have a group in France doing this. Why? Because we're all part of the body of Christ. We all need to repent. I'm going to put this book up for you to look at. It's called Planting Repentance in the garden of the Lord. Planting repentance in the garden of the Lord. It takes you through 14 small group gatherings, six, eight people, maybe at the max 10 people. You can even do this over the phone, by the way, <laughs> with our COVID-19 restrictions. You can do it over the phone. And it's based on the book of Proverbs starting with those first seven abominations, those are each one of seven sessions. I just recommend that you take advantage of this. Go ahead and, you know, email me if you can't buy it on Amazon. It's also published by Zulon Press. And uh, that's X-U-L-O-N, maybe also on the Zulon website. But either way, we want to support you. That's the whole point of National Day of Repentance. Let's end with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we don't want to be like the people in Capernaum that saw your miracles and yet failed to repent. We see repentance as a gift. Open up our hearts and our minds. And Lord, we open up the door to invite you to come and dine with us. Lead us into this repentance process so that as your bride will be ready, we know you're coming soon as our bridegroom. I pray this in Yeshua, Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. God bless you.